Disorder always increases. Statues crumble. Pictures fade. Life is messy and fragile. And that's just the second law of thermodynamics. We are all powerless at the feet of a cruel queen named Entropy. Why are we here? I don't know. Here's a question that's only slightly easier to answer. How are we here? How did life come to exist on Earth? A lot of research on the origin of life focuses on the biochemistry side of that question. What are the basic molecular building blocks of life and how did they form in the first place? For example, the famous Miller-Urey experiment showed that water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen, when sparked with electricity, can form life essential amino acids. What we've learned from this kind of experiment is that making the basic building blocks of life out of non-living matter is possible, but really, really hard. It seems like life is just extremely improbable, like we're just a statistical freak of nature. And I find that pretty unsatisfying. There's another interesting approach to this question of how life came to exist. Entropy. One of the most salient characteristics of living things is that we have really low internal entropy. We're these highly structured, ordered things. We even have the ability to repair ourselves to maintain low entropy. That seems to completely fly in the face of the second law of thermodynamics. The entropy of the universe always increases. Queen entropy never takes no for an answer. And yet, here we are. So how do living things manage to maintain low internal entropy? How is that possibly allowed? Well, the second law of thermodynamics says the entropy of the universe always increases. As long as us low entropy beings sufficiently increase the entropy of our surroundings, we net increase the entropy of the universe and there's no problem. Like when a plant photosynthesizes, it takes in sunlight. That's high energy photons. The energy is concentrated, organized, so the entropy is quite low. The plant uses the sunlight to build more plant, and in the process, it exports some heat into the surrounding air. And heat means randomly jiggling molecules. The energy is spread out, so the entropy is high. In total, low entropy in, high entropy out, the total entropy increases and the plant gets to stay a plant. And so this is how life is allowed to exist, under the cruel reign of the second law of thermodynamics. It's eat or be eaten create entropy or be destroyed by it. Our only hope for survival is our ability to take the concentrated energy around us and dissipate it as heat to produce entropy. So we, living things, we're not defying the second law of thermodynamics at all. If anything, we're facilitating it. Because we're here, the whole Earth is absorbing sunlight, dissipating heat, churning out entropy far more efficiently than an abiotic Earth would. Queen entropy is fine with allowing us to cling to our tiny, pathetic, low entropy forms, so long as we're using them to do her bidding. But that still doesn't explain how we got here, how these incredibly complex cells came to be in the first place. To explore one possible answer, let's go back and look at that plant again. When the plant's a baby, maybe it has like one leaf. It's kind of crappy at absorbing sunlight. But when it manages to dissipate a little heat, Queen Entropy says, more, and the plant uses the heat dissipation to grow more leaves and become a little better at absorbing energy. Energy it can then use to dissipate more heat and grow more leaves and absorb even more energy. It's a positive feedback loop that makes the plant get better and better at dissipating heat. And this is the crucial part, because this might be a more general phenomenon in all matter, living or not. Recent theory and simulations suggest that, when the conditions are right, an energy source can drive matter in a feedback loop, shaping and reshaping the matter to get better and better at dissipating heat. In this way, the matter can spontaneously find a shape that's extremely well adapted to absorb the energy source, even when that shape is really complex. In other words, it might not be so far-fetched that, in Earth's primordial ocean, abiotic molecules found a way to shape themselves into RNA, a basic building block of all life, and a molecule which just happens to be fantastic at dissipating heat from photons in the 200 to 300 nanometer range. 
the range of light that would filter through Earth's early atmosphere. Earth was being bathed in this high energy light. Queen Entropy wants that energy dissipated. And maybe it's inevitable that she found a way to do it. And maybe that way was ultimately us. Scientists don't know that that's how life came to be. This is an active area of research and current results are preliminary, speculative. It's hard to know exactly what happened four billion years ago, but I think this is a really exciting theory. It imagines life as just one manifestation of a more general phenomenon. Sometimes energy sources drive matter to dissipate heat. And as a consequence, some of that matter starts to look like me. It makes me feel a little less like a random fluctuation. So if you're ever feeling purposeless and alone, just, just remember, remember, Queen Entropy loves you. The content of this video is mostly based on the work of one super cool biophysicist, Jeremy England. In particular, there is a fantastic essay he wrote that includes pretty much everything I just covered, plus more stuff. It's awesome, go read it, links in the description, along with a bunch of other articles I thought were cool. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, thank you for watching.